There we were, five men and four kids sitting around the campfire having fun, but also noticing the temperature dropping considerably. By about 10 p.m., the temperature was down in the low 20s and our propane fire just couldn't keep up, so we returned to our tents. Tonight would be the first night I used my new diesel heater, and I'd be glad I did. Man, it got cold last night, like super cold, seven degrees. We were warm, we had that heater, the heaters, we got in that toolbox up there. It is uh, still cooking, but he didn't want to come out into the cold yet. So I'm gonna let the sun heat things up and uh, just keep that thing running. It ran like a dream, man, all night. It was too hot. Uh, I opened up the sunroof and kind of used that as a as a way to let some of the extra heat get out. But it wasn't, we weren't gonna turn it off because man, you could tell it was just cold. The biggest lesson I learned that night was that you should always have a backup source of heat if you're going to camp in dangerously cold climates. If you're interested in seeing all the tent heater options we've played around with, check out the video I made reviewing them. I'll link it below. This morning, everything's frozen. The challenge of making coffee for all of us has been we don't have water that's not frozen except for a couple bottles that were in people's tents. I didn't bring anything into my tent because I wasn't even thinking about it. Nobody really did, but we've got enough for coffee. so. I'm starting with that. <laughs> I put on my thermometer and uh, checked it this morning from my nice warm sleeping bag and it said seven, so I just went back in my seat. <laughs> you were coming out. Any idea what it is right now? Uh, last one I got, it warmed up pretty quick once the sun came up. Yeah. It's still in the 20s, but it's, it's, you know, it's much better than seven. It was cold. It was super cold. Everything on the trailer froze. Brooklyn, were you cold last night? Yes, definitely. I took off. When I, I, I got really warm, I sleep back, and I took off my sweatshirt and my socks, and then in the middle of the night, I went, I'm so cold, and I just slept through it. Yeah, my sink's frozen, everything's frozen. Oh, man. Hopefully it doesn't break anything. There's nothing better than giving somebody a cup of coffee. In the hospital, I have this thing about giving people water. A lot of my patients would just eat some water. I'd be like, you know, you could say, oh, the nurse will get it for you, or I'll get the tech or somebody. And, uh, and for me, I would say, Hold on, I'll be right back. And there's something special about giving them water. These wipes, I've never seen this before. My wipes are frozen solid. See this little guy right here, he goes on top of here. And what happens is, this is how I would turn it on. And the ice froze the water that was stuck in the valve. And it popped this off. Same thing with my water over here. It popped this guy off right here. Luckily this didn't break, but this one, see how it broke there? So... In the future, I gotta make sure I drain all my lines at night because I totally forgot. Do you know why uh, water breaks things when it turns to ice? Why? It expands. So if you have it in a closed container, it'll pop all the lids. Hopefully our tank had enough space for the ice to expand into. I think it did. What tank? Our water tank. Because our water tank's frozen solid right now. Oh, it's a really cold night. It was, that's the coldest night we've ever spent, Brody. Camping? Yeah, got down to seven degrees. It was probably the hottest night you've ever spent in a tent, right? Yeah. <laughs> One cool thing about everything freezing solid was that the remaining water in the lake bed became an ice skating rink for the kids, which is not something we get to see often. The kids played for a while and I, I did my best to show them how to safely traverse thin ice, and the adults then decided their next moves. After such a harsh night, at least by our standards, the two rigs with diesel heaters decided to stay out and the remaining three headed back for repairs. We knew we would miss them, but these are guys we get out with pretty regularly and getting back on the trail with them never takes too long. We are uh, packing up. Our friends have left us. It was cold. They, we had broken water pipes. Uh, nobody's batteries would charge, so everyone woke up pretty much dead this morning. So our plan is not to camp up here at this elevation again tonight, but we're going to explore for a while, and then uh, we'll head out of here. We'll go down to a lower elevation, a warmer place, and uh, that way we don't wake up with all of our water just solid, frozen solid. 
I had actually seen three wild horses the evening before and heard them galloping on the lake bed a couple times overnight. So getting back into the deeper mountains, one of my hopes was to find these majestic animals. No sign of the horses, but we're coming up to a spot called Quartz Mine. I'm guessing they pulled some quartz out of there. I see there's uh, ruins down here that we can poke around in. I'm going to throw the drone up there and just make sure that it's not like dynamited shut or something. Sounds good. You see these little ruins here? Yeah. And then you see all the way up, there's like a trail of rock coming down. Yeah. That They had a tramway here and this was the base of it. And that's how it would all come down. That's the little pieces that fell out of their buckets over time. That's pretty cool. All right, let's send the drone up and see. Quartz mines in this region were often actually seeking the gold that could be found distributed in the quartz veins. And while this mine has been lost to history, that's probably what they were mining here. We flew the drone up the path of fallen quartz only to find the mine had been dynamited shut, and hiking all the way up there to see the footings of an old tramway didn't seem worth it. So we let the kids collect some quartz before heading to the next mine. I got all these, I don't pull my pants down. I also have web quartz. Like... There was a mine here yesterday called the Jack Henry Mine, and we drove past it because we were exploring other things, but I kind of had it in my mind to come and check on it again. And uh, it just so happens that our road is taking us that way. I'm, I'm seeing this is metal and stuff strewn around here and a chimney. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, let me show you what I'm looking at. Yeah, so this was obviously somebody's house. Cause this might've been like a mantle. So yeah, definitely a mantle here. Like corrugated metal was maybe up against this because of the shape of it. Yeah, like so maybe maybe something, maybe it was like a hot box. Like you put stuff in there and it warmed it up. Maybe. Huh. That looks like a mine. It does. This short tunnel dug at the base of the mountain was likely the place where miners stored their explosives to keep them safe and dry. So we hiked up the mountain to find the real mine. We are hiking high above Cactus Flat, going into the Jack Henry Mine. Down below, there was not much. It went in about 100 feet and stopped. So now we're heading up to the second part, which looks more promising. Hiked all the way up here. All that to find. This mine's been closed. While we didn't get the mine explorations we were looking for, and we didn't find those wild horses, we were in a place we had never been, and a place that many people never go, and we were thankful to have that opportunity. We drove out of the mountains and headed south to continue the adventure as I thought about exactly how to work on the campfire grilled steaks Nick and I have been pushing towards perfection on our last few trips. Steak. 
man. It's so good every time. I just don't know what to say. Mm. Maybe it's because we're out here and it's cold, but maybe it's because it's actually that good. Around a campfire again, we talked about how we had survived our coldest night in the tents, explored places we'd never been, and had a pretty awesome day. Once again, we were exactly where we needed to be.